Hey everybody, John DZ Adventury. We are in an undisclosed location in Malibu, California. And with me is Matt Burnham from Honda. Hey there everyone. Hey John, thanks Hi. for trekking all the way up here in your cool ride, really appreciate it. Yeah, I'm glad to be here. Thanks awesome. for the invite. Yeah, for sure. Thanks for helping us build this awesome vehicle. It looks great. Yeah, and I really can't wait to walk you through some of the modifications that we worked on together for um, your audience and so they can get a uh, sneak peek behind the scenes of right. what happened here and how did we even get here you know? right so Matt contacted me and asked if I would help him with the overland build for the overland Expo West in Flagstaff Arizona the goal was to get an authentic overland vehicle and uh, Matt I think we hit the mark. I think so too. And just to add on to that, you know, uh, reaching out to you, John, it was really important because on top of the authentic build, we really want to reinforce the uh, future direction of trail sport models and some of the really cool, unique features and off-road capabilities that you really help guided us on to uh, mod out this vehicle with. So we're going to point out all those really cool things um, on this vehicle today. So awesome. Let me know when you want to do a quick little walk around. I'll show you all the cool well, stuff. I'm ready to go. But one thing I notice is you now have legit recovery points. Yes. So that was one of the things that we uh, modified on this vehicle. It does have the signature uh, trail sport orange color applied to it. These were designed and fabricated in-house by our Honda R&D engineers team in uh, Ohio and LA. They also helped uh, develop the underbody protection for the oil pan as well as the fuel tank uh, skid plates. And they're made out of the three millimeter high strength steel. One thing we should also touch on too, which is like the first thing that customers are gonna see is the whole front end restyled of the Passport Trail Looks Sport. Looks great. Yeah, you know, the new design that's restyled for this vehicle, um, it really matches its true off-road capabilities now. You know, it has, from the A-pillar going forward, new sheet metal. So you got new fenders, new hood with a nice little overhang. You got the updated grill, which is more boxier, looks more aggressive and more rugged. Um, you also got the front uh, skid garnish up here. Um, so really cool. Um, I I'm excited for the customers who ever get the Passport or Passport Trail Sport version. Um, they still will have this really rugged off-road look when they drive in this vehicle. Nice. Yeah. Now, is this front bumper in the way it's designed? Because I noticed that it has a better approach angle now. Is this going to be unique to the Trail Sport or? Uh, so the front end, uh, it, the uh, application is across the Passport um, model uh, vehicle. So um, it, it'll be like the same bumper. The only difference is the front uh, garnish is and, painted. Uh, is this going to be uh, like a robust recovery point here that we're talking about? Yes. Yeah, so when we developed this uh, modification, John, with the front recovery points, uh, these are fully functioning, um, so they will get you out of a, a, a fix or an issue that you may have. Um, but this is something that we apply to this vehicle because we had it as a prototype on a previous uh, passport for the Rebel Rally trip. But future models, it might not be so um, straightforward in the front like this. But um, for this particular build, we decided to um, uh, have it come out through the front bumper, through the front face shift. Cool. Thank you, Matt. Like we said, John, we kind of walk through the front end styling um, as we work our way down. You can kind of see this very unique air inlet. Oh, wow. Yeah. And if you see how this inlet goes all the way through, passes the air, high pressure air passage as it follows through um, over the tire here, where it does increase and improve um, uh, uh, aerodynamics. Very cool. Yeah, typically wind will blow off here and just kind of kind of get churned up by the, a moving tire. That's correct. And this is just going to help offset that. This is functional in that it creates an air current in, and what that means is more MPGs, less drag coefficient. Since we're here already, John, um, let's talk about the increased ground clearance. So this is one of the things that we'll see on future trail sport models 
and also part of the bill like when you're traversing certain terrain out there you know increased ground clearance is important right um, as well as some aggressive AT tires we have on here um, additionally uh, what's neat for the passport trail sport for uh, post-production models or accessories that customers will be able to get HPD accessories applied to their trail sport to give it more of an aggressive and performance sporty look. So nice. you can see the black wheels here and these fender flares um, are HPD. Looks good. I need to I need to pick some of those up yeah. for my for my ride. Yeah. <laughs> cool. All right. Let's take a quick little walk around here and show you some more goodies. Cool. So we have the talked about the uh, more aggressive AT tires, HPD wheels. Got the nice little fender flares. Um, take it around here. Uh, good friends at uh, Dirt Complex. Thank you for the introduction and you know working with uh, AJ as well. So we got the full size spare in the back, which is definitely key and important for you know the overlanding uh, uh, trips that you may take. Absolutely, it's all about safe return, right? Absolutely. So skid plates, all terrain tires, and then also a full size spare tire. Absolutely required. Those are the three things you should have on your first overlanding adventure yeah i agree so we applied that on here um it also has the little cool little built-in uh table in there so once you get to your journey everything's easy to pop down cook some food on top of it and then look pop your home up you got somewhere to That's uh, right. sleep too yeah yeah looks good i, I love it and also one thing that's unique to the Honda Trail Sport uh, uh, edition is the rear bumper is actually uh, restyled and different. Um, it'll also receive the dual exhaust uh, tips back here. Okay, and those those uh, that exhaust looks beefier than what I have. Yeah, so they, <laughs> it gives it a more sportier look yeah. for the performance. Okay, that build looks amazing. Yeah, definitely something to be really proud of, John. And um, like it was an adventure to get here, and yeah. can't wait to actually take it on an adventure, you know? And I love how, how they uh, added this. Did you guys add this, or did AJ add this? Yeah, we added that actually on there. It's one of the things, uh, I, I, we briefly talked about it. Um, okay. Because what's kind of cool is because it already takes up uh, the hitch, but then we still want it to be functional, right? But then you also have the additional one here, so. Right. Yeah. And so the cool thing about this is you could actually hook up your, um, like a bike rack. Yep. And uh, I'll just uh, give you guys, since I'm so familiar with this tire carrier, the cool thing is with that bike rack, it's gonna swing out of the way. And if you have it self-locked like that, it's completely out of your way, it's locked in. So it's not gonna swing and hit something. Yeah, very cool. So with the Honda Rugged Roads project, you know, it's really like a two-fold approach. One was how do we articulate and show people the future intentions of trail sport? And I think we achieved that. You know, we looked at the front recovery points, underbody skid plates, full size spare, increased ground clearance, more aggressive tires. Uh, additionally, with the overlanding part too, like what, is, what are the things that John needs? What are the things that these overlanders need when they go out there? And I think we achieved that too with the additional modifications and then adding the rooftop tent on here as well. So um, it's really cool. Uh, as I mentioned, the Trail Sport Orange is like a signature color, and we actually carried that through through the interior as well. Um, so if you want, I can show you what the interior looks like. It's very subtle, but um, I think it's uh, apropos to what uh, uh, Overlander would want in a vehicle when they're overlanding. So if you want to go on the other side, sure. we could. But yeah. before we do that, Matt, I, I would actually like to talk about the mid-size Hondas, which include the Passport, the Pilot, and the Ridgeline. Uh, a lot of automotive journalists don't talk about just the built-in capabilities, the base capabilities of a Honda. A lot of people aren't aware of the crawl ratio. Honestly, I think I'm the only one that talks about it. 
and I'm not even primarily a, a car reviewer, I'm an overlander, and uh, I produce overlanding content. Mm. So this Honda has a 20 to one crawl ratio. Uh, many other competitors are kind of around the 12, 14, 16, and that's about it. Um, this has a real automatic transmission that uses real gears. And from my experiences, the torque converter doesn't stall very easily. I could honestly tell you in the 83,000 miles I've driven my Honda Passport, thousands of miles off-road, at least a hundred overlanding adventures. This thing has never stalled on me. There is, there has never been a case where I've had transmission stall. I've been in extremely deep snow in Big Bear during ski season. Mm -hmm. And I remember I was driving through uh, about 15 inches of snow. That was, it wasn't even fresh. It was kind of, it was about five days old. And I was just plowing through it. Uh, there were three occasions where I came to an abrupt stop because that snow got deeper, maybe two feet. And uh, I had no choice but to bust out the shovel and whack away the snow yeah, to yeah. clear the way. It never stalled. It just, the engine just keeps revving, the tires keep spinning. It's just a matter if you have traction or not. Uh, so I want to point out that these, a lot of people don't know these mid-size Hondas are much more capable than the average buyer thinks. No, you make a really good point, John. Um, like you said, most people, they don't know how capable our vehicles are. Um, you know, Honda, even though we probably don't wave our flag about off-road capability and all that, but we've been doing this for 50 plus years. If you look at our uh, development from side-by-sides, motorcycles, ATVs, we've been doing it. And our uh, current line of, of light trucks, they've been always capable of doing those things, right? But now we're reinforcing it now with the trail sport line. Um, it's good on-road and off-road. And, you know, this particular uh, model has the IBTM4 uh, and it's best in class. Right. Fully capable, like you said, you, you know, it, it just a keeps going. A lot know? of people don't know that it is best in class all-wheel drive. Uh, there are other companies that utilize similar technology. I, I understand that Honda's rear drive unit is proprietary. Um, but basically, an all-wheel drive system that's using twin clutches in the rear differential is going to be on the higher end. A lot of the other all-wheel drive systems just use the ABS system to break wheels to help transfer power to the other wheel. Not only does this thing have a mechanical limited slip differential, it's electronically controlled. Not only does it work off-road, it helps you on-road. It will help this big 4,200 pound vehicle handle like a much lighter vehicle because it sends power to the outside wheel and helps rotate the vehicle. That's called, some people call it yaw control. It is power-based torque vectoring, not brake-based torque vectoring. I'm not a Honda engineer. I noticed that my Honda Passport, and let's go pan over there real quick. I noticed my Honda Passport has a really awesome traction control system. So I talked about those brakes and how they use the ABS system to brake a wheel to send power the other way. So you also have that rear differential doing its thing. It's almost like two all-wheel drive systems in one. Okay, I never hear people talk about that. That's a good point. You gotta, yeah. you gotta have people talk about that because um, I'm not the only one showing off these capabilities. There is that big YouTuber, Sarah Entuned. I haven't seen that one. She's a girl, okay. tall, but she uh, drove up a Honda Ridgeline mm. up this obstacle. Mm -hmm. It made it up, first attempt, and she was genuinely surprised. She's like, what the heck? How did this make it up? Uh, she took up uh, three other vehicles, mm -hmm. and those three other vehicles did not do so well. So imagine this tall hill, mm -hmm. and the Ridgeline starts crawling up, it's using its rear limited slip differential to 
to crawl its way up, and it does something called, um, I guess you'd call a lock slide. Alan, what's the proper term for that? Okay, it's doing something that's similar to locker slide, mm -hmm. where you're driving up and it's going up sideways like this. That's, that's a rear differential doing its thing. All right, other vehicles, they get stuck in this right down here and that's it. Boom, fail, fail. Ridgeline, Yep, and it goes to the point of being on-road and off-road capable, right. but not waving our flag or talking about it all the time, but it's really, it's fully capable. People have done it, owners, like you just gave a, a great example um, of it doing something in that environment without any issues. Right. Um, we're definitely excited for customers to get into this vehicle. Um, when the trail sport does come out sometime next year, um, they'll have an opportunity to take their passport overlanding, you know, maybe for the first time, get some modifications done as well if they want. But even if they didn't do any of this stuff and they just wanted to come up this little, you know, through the hills of Malibu or some little off-roading, it's fully capable, you know? Absolutely. Yeah. So that was some exciting stuff. This Honda Trail Spurt prototype, well, not the one that you're seeing right now in this commercial, but the one you saw in the video with the front tow hooks, that is going to be displayed at the Overland Expo West in Flagstaff, Arizona. For those that don't know, that is the largest overlanding expo in North America, maybe even the world. Also exciting news is my vehicle will be displayed next to it. That's at least that's what I was told. So very excited about that. I'll also be doing a seminar on how to get into overlanding in your all wheel drive. Just some disclaimers for people that are not familiar with my channel. Honda reached out to me after two years of owning my 2019 Honda Passport and taking it on over 100 overlanding adventures. I do not work for Honda, nor did I get paid to do any of this. And I also do not benefit any way financially if you purchase a Honda. However, I feel like I give a very unbiased viewpoint about the vehicle I drive and I benefit from YouTube views. To support me, it doesn't cost you anything. If you would just please like the video and leave a comment, I would really appreciate it. And that will go a long way in helping me continue doing this. For all my returning viewers, Thank you so much. Seriously, from the bottom of my heart, thank you so much. Look at where you got me. I got the attention of a major car manufacturer. All because of you guys and gals. Before the end of this episode, I just want to talk about a few things about my involvement in this build. So Honda reached out to me and they asked for an authentic overlanding build. What do I consider a authentic overlanding build? Well, something that is function over form. Many of you might be familiar with this Honda Passport back in 2019. Uh, this was what they displayed over at Overland Expo. I hope I don't sound too harsh, but this roof rack, for example, way too tall. It is way too tall. This rooftop tent is about 10 inches in height. And this means that this roof rack is sitting up about five to eight inches taller than it should. Not only that, but it weighs 50 pounds or more. So the extra height and the increased weight are messing up the center of gravity. Eliminate the roof platform, save 50 pounds, and let's get that rooftop tent down lower. Next up is this unnecessary bumper. Whenever you see one of these on a vehicle, just run. They totally screw up approach angle and they're typically in an all wheel drive vehicle. They're typically attached to the radiator support beam, which if you take a hit, is gonna be really bad for that radiator. Take enough hits and, and your vehicle's done. Next up are the side steps that look like rock sliders, but they're the exact opposite. They're effectively rock catchers because of these brackets that angle down, that literally point down to catch on a rock that are centered right on the breakover angle. Stuff like this could get you into trouble on the trails. There's three modifications here and all three of them could negatively affect you. All three of those issues were addressed in this build that I helped with. Um, 
You'll see here that we have a very similar rooftop tent. The tent itself is 150 pounds and the stock crossbars are rated for 165 pounds dynamic weight. A shout out to Kathy and Richard Orr and their son RJ for inspiring part of the build with the rooftop tent. I saw how their roof nest rooftop tent set really flush with their vehicle. Um, and so that gave me the idea to incorporate it into this Honda Trail Sport Rugged Roads Overlanding build. So I'm super excited about Honda Trail Sport and what it's gonna mean for these vehicles in the future. This trim is due to release next year and uh, I'm not too sure about the technical specifications, but let's say it was just a cosmetic upgrade. As I proved with my Honda Passport, you could make it plenty, plenty capable while still keeping it very reliable. Nothing has broken down in my passport at all. I've taken it over to Moab, Utah on fins and things through the Coyote Flats Funnel Lake Trail in Bishop, California, and one of the tallest drivable passes in the 48 states, which is Imogene Pass in Colorado. These places are known to be more exclusive to body on frame, four wheel drive trucks, but you could get to these places with a modified mid-size Honda without too much fuss. And that's another point is you're not going to be struggling to get to these places in a mid-size Honda. To me, that is the appeal. Getting some of the best of both worlds. The Honda Passport is a very comfortable on-road vehicle. It's daily drivable. And at the same time, I could drive down these trails that are typically exclusive to four-wheel drives. So that does it for this episode. This project has been just so amazing to work on. Uh, don't worry, I'm still the same John Doozy. I still love the entire overlanding community, no matter what you drive. This episode was just a awesome opportunity to talk about the vehicle I drive that I've been driving for the past two and a half years and, and that has been taking me to these amazing places. Helping me today is Alan Tong. You may recognize him, he's in a lot of my videos. Hey guys. This is Alan from Borderline Explorer and he's helping me shoot this episode and work. I hope you guys enjoy the footage. That's one thing to talk about, but what I'm enjoying is this experience. Alan and I both have YouTube channels and we work as a team. We share footage to help tell our stories. So please check out his video about this. He's gonna kind of come at it from an outsider perspective since uh, he drives a Land Cruiser. Uh, he also just recently purchased an older Acura MDX, so he's somewhat in the Honda family, but check out his video. I'll link it right up here. So Overland Expo West in Flagstaff, Arizona runs from September 24th to the 26th. If you will be there, please come see me at the Honda booth. All right, until then, I hope all of you have fun on your adventures.